Party leaders in Congress have lots of carrots but few sticks. The carrots are the benefits they can offer. This includes giving members good committee assignments and helping them with campaign fundraising so that they can win re-election. However, party leaders don't have a lot of power to censure a member who votes against the party line. The main reason is that party leaders are actually chosen by the legislators in the party, and they can be removed by those members. In many ways, party leaders face a balancing act. Party leaders need power to twist the arms of members on roll call votes, but if a member votes against their constituents, they risk losing the seat altogether. The member doesn't want that, and neither does the leadership. Party leaders balance this issue by being strategic and only picking fights that they can win. Often the best tactic for them is to keep issues that divide the party off of the agenda. This is the major way in which parties have an impact. They exercise negative agenda control and keep certain policy changes from getting a vote. Carson, Monroe, and Robinson provide a nice test of the negative agenda control in their article, Unpacking Agenda Control. By way of background, they present two major models, a majoritarian model, where the median voter sets the agenda and gets its way, and a cartel model, where the party exercises negative agenda control to block bills that the majority of its members do not want. In this cartel model, the median member of the majority party becomes a pivotal player who can block bills from passing. In their paper, they provide this figure that divides things into four regions based on where the status quo is. This is the example where the Democratic Party is in the majority. Note that you should think of this as describing what happens in the House where there is no filibuster. This is similar to the pivotal politics model we have been working with. But now I have added the symbol MAJ to represent the median position of the majority party. This is the case where the status quo is in Region 1. Under both models, the outcome should end up at M. The majority party should not block this because more than half of the majority party prefers M to the status quo. Now this is the case where the status quo is in Region 2. In this case, the models differ in their predictions. The floor model, or the majoritarian model, predicts that the outcome should still be at M. But the party or cartel model predicts that the outcome will be at the point marked on the screen. The policy ends up at that point marked OP because that is the point that makes the median member of the majority party indifferent. Note that the distance between SQ and MAJ is the same as the distance between MAJ and OP. Here is an example where the status quo is in region 3. Here the floor model predicts the outcome at M while the party model predicts the outcome stays at status quo. It stays at SQ because the MAJ pivot blocks it from moving. Any status quo in Region 3 stays put and doesn't change. Finally, both models predict that anything in Region 4 ends up at M because no one has incentives to block it. They then go on to show how these two models have different predictions about something called roll rates, which is a fancy way of saying how often someone is on the losing side of a roll call vote. The key distinction is that the party cartel model predicts that the legislators between the floor median and the majority party median should not lose because bills on which they would lose are blocked from even being voted on. That is why there is a larger region where the roll call rate is zero for the party cartel model. The party's ability to exercise negative agenda control makes it harder to get things done. During the pivotal politics lectures, this was the gridlock interval. But with the majority party's ability to exercise negative agenda control, the gridlock interval can expand to this. In the American political system, it is really hard to change the status quo. There are institutions set up to protect the status quo. It also means that you only see change when things are so out of step that everyone agrees that change is needed. Which in turn means that when change occurs, those changes are likely to be very large.